win in the same stadium twice in a week where it took them 39 years to win in this city. Backdrop for Jets at Raiders, Al Michaels to call the game. Hi, Al. Thank you, Chris. Beautiful day out here in the Bay Area. You look at Rich Gannon as the Jets get ready to take on the Raiders, as usual, joined by Dan Fouts and Dennis Miller. Guys, we were here three weeks ago for a Saturday night game against Tennessee. Everybody talking about Rich Gannon as a possible NFL MVP. In 21 days, Dan, what's happened? Well, there's been some problems with Rich Gannon and his form of leadership with the Raiders. Some of the guys just don't like it, but he's a perfectionist. He's a fiery guy, much like his head coach, who's not afraid to avoid his opinion regardless of whose feelings that might get hurt but Gruden realizes that Gannon is a perfectionist that's always on edge he's never satisfied but Gruden realizes also Al that that is the reason that Rich Gannon is a success but tonight they've got to form a more unified front if they're going to beat the Jets you know Al there's a fine line between motivating your teammates and having them tune you out and let's hope Gannon is as aware of it as he is the seam in his own well 62,000 fans will echo those sentiments should be a great one Chris. We'll see you in a few minutes. ...with the League of Men, the 31 clans began a storied quest. As the Emerald Warriors ride into the den of the Dark Raiders, only one clan will emerge. For the path to the ring narrows with every step. This is when I like playing football, when everything is on the line. You either win or you go home. It comes down to who doesn't want to go home the most. New York's return trip to Oakland and a playoff berth wasn't booked until the waning seconds of last week's season finale. Now in the postseason spotlight, the Jets and Raiders are ready for round two in this winner-take-all brawl as the quest begins for pro football's ultimate prize. It's uh, one of the great motivators in this business and with this team is to try and help those guys get that ring. We want that thing bad, man. If good fortune doth befriend thee, and ill fate doth not befall, thou will find a prize awaits thee. One ring to rule them all. Associates Coliseum, which is, as you can hear, really rocking for this AFC Wild card playoff game as the Oakland Raiders host the New York Jets for the second time in six days. Guys, just a perfect night. Jets come to town to take on the Raiders. Tim Brown someday, of course, going to the Hall of Fame, but right now he's on the field with Eric Dickerson. Good evening, Eric. Hey, Al. Thanks, Al. Tim, the Raiders have lost three straight games. What's the confidence level of this football team right now? Well, you know, it's good. We got a lot of veterans on the team, man. We know that we can play at a high level. We just got to pick it up tonight. We feel if we can win one, we can win four. So uh, we're just looking to go out and play a good game tonight. Thanks, Tim. Over to Melissa Stark. All right, Eric, thanks very much. I'm joined by Herman Edwards. Herm, Curtis Martin, your Pro Bowl running back, has rushed for just 61 yards the last two games against the Raiders. How do you break him out tonight? Well, we have to be patient, I think. I, and I think at times when they stop us, uh, we can't get away from the run. Obviously, he's an excellent football player and really one of the reasons we're here. And we have to just stick to it. They're going to cause some problems at times, but we have to just be bullheaded enough to try to keep running him. You played in seven playoff games, including a Super Bowl. Based on your experience, what wins the game tonight? Well, if you can survive, especially on the road, the first quarter, and, and, and the atmosphere that they create here, you know, don't turn the ball over, don't beat yourself, and make it a game. I think if you can do that, we'll settle in and be able to play pretty good football. Thanks. Back to you, Al. All right, thank you, Melissa. Amazingly, what he says, of course, is so true, but last week they turned the ball over three times. The Raiders didn't turn it over at all, but because of that man at the end, and a 53-yard field goal, the longest ever in this stadium in the regular season, here are the Jets back in Oakland. Terry Kirby back to run the kickoff back for the Oakland Raiders, the AFC West champions. Looks like a movie. I mean, it's just a perfect early evening. And although the uh, Jets and Raiders played here last week, this is a totally different atmosphere. Playoff atmosphere, night game. These fans have been in the parking lot since last night getting ready for this one, and they are in full throat. They've been in a parking lot since last week. Rich Gannon and the offense ready to come out onto the field after the Raiders return the kick. Crowd roaring, and here we go. 
If the Jets win, they go to Pittsburgh. If the Raiders win, they go to New England. Paul, good deep angle kick. Kirby from the two-yard line. And the Jets with good coverage. He stopped up at the 24. Let's take a look at the Oakland offense. Rich Gannon, University of Delaware. Charlie Garner, University of Tennessee. John Ritchie, Stanford. Jerry Rice, Mississippi Valley State University. Tim Brown, University of Notre Dame. Roland Williams, Syracuse University. Barry Sands, University of Utah. Steve Wisniewski, Penn State University. Adam True, University of Nebraska. Frank Middleton, University of Arizona. Lincoln Kennedy, University of Washington. And now from the 23-yard line, the Raiders begin. Garner is the tailback in this set. And it is Charlie Garner up to the 30-yard line. Gain of seven. Here's the New York defense. Sean Elliott, University of Tennessee. Shane Burton, University of Tennessee. Steve Martin, University of Missouri. John Abraham, University of South Carolina. Mo Lewis, University of Georgia. Marvin Jones, Florida State University. James Ferrier, University of Virginia. Aaron Glenn, Texas A&M University. Marcus Coley, Texas Tech University. Victor Green, Apple University. Damian Robinson, University of Iowa. And the Raiders that time going without a huddle on second and three. Gannon hits Roland Williams for a first down. And this is what John Gruden wants to do to reinforce the jet lag, the tired legs perhaps of the Jets. Get them worn out early. He knows he's had, they've had to cross the country three times now. And he also likes the way Rich Gannon operates the hurry-up offense. He can get a good look at the defense, get a feel for what they're going to do, and also keep the substitution package on the sideline. Gannon's rating second in the league, second only to MVP Kurt Warner. Now Gannon to throw. A lot of time. To the outside he goes. The catch is made by Jerry Rice. Good spin move. And at the age of 39 and looking like 29, he gets to the 36 and a first down. Going down the field, Gannon had a ton of time to find Jerry Rice, his outlet receiver, all the way to the left side of the field, working against Marco, Marcus Coleman. Coleman slips there, and now he slips here, and the 39-year-old looks like a 29-year-old. First and 10, the ball is at the 36-yard line, two minutes into the game. Richie is the fullback, Garner is the tailback, and Williams sets up in motion with Garner again. Wording through the middle, taking it to the 28. Charlie Garner, the subject of uh, a lot of speculation around the area this week, injured his foot last week, was in and out of the game against the Jets, didn't practice much, but looked great at the outset. Yeah, right? but even if he doesn't play as much tonight, Al, you know, every cloud has a silver and black lining. I think if Wheatley sees some more time, he exacts a more physical price when he goes up the middle than Garner. I'm sure we'll see a lot of Wheatley tonight, but right now it is Garner who is the man, and that's a third Raider first down as he takes it to the 23 where Victor Green makes the stop. Charlie Garner this season started, of course, with Philadelphia, then to San Francisco. Only two players in 10 years with at least one first down rushing and receiving in each of his team's games. The other guy was Marshall Falk two years ago. First and 10 at the 23-yard line with Gannon setting up, slings it out to the side. Here's Garner, and Garner gets taken down in the open field by Mo Lewis at the 18 after a gain of five. Looks like John Gruden's going to get the most out of Charlie Garner that he possibly can as Garner comes out of the game now. He only practiced on Thursday for a little bit, but again, no pass rush from the Jets. Gannon is surveying the entire field. Look at him look around. Now he knows that Garner's in the flat. Another first, uh, a good gain on first down. And Tyrone Wheatley sees his first action. He comes into the game. Garner goes out. Richie remains in at fullback. Jeremy Brigham goes in motion. And Tyrone Wheatley, the one-time giant from Michigan star, takes the ball to the 13 and close to a first down. Tackled by Steve Martin and a most impressive opening drive by the Raiders. Hey, Dan, uh, Gruden told us he wanted the forced tempo because he said his team was getting into an NFL glide coming out of the huddle. What exactly is an NFL glide, my friend? Well, it's when they take their time getting the line of scrimmage. And uh, right now it appears that we're with this clock stoppage to get a chain measurement here Gruden has things going just the way he wants this is even a, a, a more of an up tempo with the no huddle 
than Gruden would even like. I mean, he likes the way they get out of the huddle and gets their formations as shifting. But I really believe that this is a tremendous advantage for the silver and black to really reinforce the negative thoughts that the Jets might have on the effect of the travel across country. Well, we have seen Gardner, we've seen Wheatley, and then when they get to third and fourth and short, they go to Zach Crockett. So Crockett is in the game. Behind Richie, third down and inches at the 13-yard line. Against a five-man front, Crockett. And he's able to get his shoulder into the Jet defense and push him forward for a first down. Capsulizing the Raiders this season. Won the AFC West for the second year in a row. Last six games, eight points or less. So one possession games, but they lost four of them. They were fourth in the league in scoring. And as we mentioned, Gannon with the second highest pass rating in the league to Warner. At the 11 yard line, first down. Wheatley is the tailback. Wheatley gets the ball, and Wheatley gets stood up at the nine yard line and pushed back from that spot by, among others, Marvin Jones. Not a lot of surprise as to what the Raiders are doing on the ground. And I do know one thing, Al, that that direction they're running in is south. This is the way the stadium is laid out. So the north and south running the Gruden wants, he's getting. This drive began back at the 23-yard line, opening drive of the game. Garner and Crockett are now in the game together as split backs in this set. And it's second down and seven from the eight-yard line. That's Brown in motion toward the inside. Gannon, pump fake, slings it to the outside to Garner, breaks a tackle, and gets to the four-yard line. They had him stop back at the 11. Marcus Coleman couldn't wrap him up, and Garner takes it inside the five, and that'll set up a third and about three. Well, Gannon wanted to throw a screen pass to the other side of the field. Again, no pass rush allows him to come all the way to the near side here. And then Marcus Coleman now, two big missed tackles. Early in the drive, he missed Jerry Rice, and now he's got Charlie Garner dead in his sights. Can't wrap him up, and the Raiders are inside the five. Great opening drive for Oakland. Spot the ball at the three-yard line and make it third and two as Garner comes out, and Randy Jordan and Terry Kirby in the game. And this is... Jordan as the setback as Gannon throws and he hits Jordan in traffic on a curious call and he gets stopped shy of the first down and that's going to force them to bring Janikowski in for a field goal attempt. A curious call as, as well as the Raiders have been running the ball. They already have 31 carries on just six or 31 yards on six carries. So here is Janikowski on and off the field trouble, cellulitis in his foot, and all the attendant problems for a 21-yard field goal, and this one is good. He thought he was ready to kick last week, but Gruden had him inactive. He's back tonight, and he gives them the lead, but the drive bogs down on the third down call, and the Raiders settle for three, three nothing. Here is Sebastian. Deep kick, fielded by Chad Morton at the four. And Morton gets dragged down by his arm at the 26 by Travian Smith, the Raiders special teams maven. A 16 remaining in the opening period. 3-0 Raiders. The Oakland Raiders on top of the New York Jets. 3-0 after the opening drive. And now the Jets will have the football it's for the, the first boot. time. Right there, Al. Raider officials. Looks like the owner of the Vikings on the left. Not red. On first down, this is Curtis Martin picking up three. Here's the Jet offense. Vinny Testaverde, University of Miami. Curtis Martin, University of Pittsburgh. Richie Anderson, Penn State University. Wayne Corbett, Hofstra University. And Ronnie is called FSU. Anthony Beck, West Virginia University. Jason Fabini, University of Cincinnati. Terry Jenkins, Georgia State University. Devin Wyatt, LSU. Brandon Thomas, Mississippi State University. Ryan Young, Kansas State University. On second and seven, Testaverde slings it to the outside. And this is caught by Curtis Martin. Martin this season caught 53 passes, third on the team in receptions. Here's the Oakland defense. 
Clay, you know, child, University of California. Rod Coleman, East Carolina University. Grady Jackson, Knoxville College. Tony Brain, Florida State University. William Thomas, Texas A&M University. Greg Baker, University of Colorado. Elijah Alexander, Kansas State University. Mr. Wilson to y'all, you know the school. Eric Allen, Arizona State University. Johnny Harris, Mississippi State University. Anthony Dorsett, University of Pittsburgh. And on third and four, the Jets operate in a four wide and keep it on the ground. Good play call. And Curtis Martin with a stiff arm over the 50-yard line to the 47 of Oakland, run out by Torrey James. The Jets offense spread the Raider defense out and give the ball to Curtis Martin on a draw play. And then once he gets by Beekert, it's just open field. Raiders are in man-to-man -man pass coverage down the field. That means when Martin gets by the linebackers, those defensive backs have got to turn around and come up and try to tackle them. Shed Anthony Dorsett on his way to a 22-yard game. First down, New York at the 46-yard line. Lamont Jordan is in the game, flanked out to the left. He makes the catch, and their second-round draft choice, who had a big touchdown run here last week, takes the ball to the 37-yard line where he's tackled by Eric Allen. Well, Herm Edwards told us, much like Marshall Falk and Trunk Canada in St. Louis, Curtis Martin determines Lamont's participation, but they do have a separate package just for Lamont alone. Since I can't see Curtis being weathered at this early point in the game, that was probably part of that package right there. Well, and after that long run, you would expect him to be a little winded, but the bonus is, is you get Lamont Jordan in the game and he gives you eight, nine yards. As he does there, Gave him nine, second down and one from the 38-yard line. Now they give it to Curtis Martin, and Martin takes the ball to the 35 and another first down. Here he's tackled by William Thomas. What about the New York Jets? Well, they wound up with a record of 10 and 6. Third in the AFC East, coming as a wild card. 11 games decided by eight or fewer points. And as we said at the top, seven and one on the road, and plus 18 turnover margin leading the NFL despite last week being minus three in that department. Seven and one on the road is like Hope and Crosby. At the 35 yard line first down for the Jets. Little toss back to Martin looking for room but nothing develops and the play is broken up by Grady Jackson. Let's check in with Eric. Well, I'm very surprised that the Raiders came out so confident. Now, as a former player, when you lose three games in a row, believe me, it's hard to be a confident football team. The Jets are 7-1 on the road. They just beat this team last week. They didn't play very well, but they still won the football game. But right now, I must say, the Raiders look very confident, but I really believe that the Jets are a little bit more confident. Well, the Raiders with a good opening drive, but it bogged down at the end, and they had to settle for a field goal. Now the Jets after a couple of first downs with Lamont Jordan in the game in the backfield on second down and 11 from the 36-yard line. And they give it to Jordan, and Jordan takes the ball inside the 30 to the 29. Lamont, the second-round pick out of Maryland. Well, you know, Herm said his team reacts well to being inconvenienced with all the schlepping going on, plus being in tough climbs like Oakland. This is about as inconvenient as it can get. You know, you get back to that opening drive of the Raiders when Gannon hit all five passes. They averaged about four or five yards every rush. Oh, all the way down the three-yard line and only get three points. That could come back to haunt the Raiders. Third down and four. Martin and Anderson are the split backs in this set. Vinny on a tight little roll and then a little shovel pass to Martin. And the Raiders smell that one out of the 28. William Thomas making the tackle, and that will bring in John Hall to attempt a game-tying field goal. Raiders play a lot of man-to-man. -man. That means linebackers on running backs. And from the left side, you'll see William Thomas, 59, come in there. He had Curtis Martin the whole way. Made a nice, solid tackle, and we'll bring out John Hall now to see if he can do what he did last time out. Tom Tupa to hold, and what a great hold by Tupa last week, scooping it off the grass. This is a 45-yard field goal in the other direction. He kicked his 53-yarder last week to the south, this to the north. James Dirth to snap it. Tupa gets it down, and Hall this time is wide to the left. Well, I'd say he's had his one big kick for the year. <laughs> it was a big one. But wide left here, and it's still 3-0 open. 
John Hall missing that field goal that would have tied this ball game up. It's a good snap from James Durth and a solid hold from Tom Tupa, but it just appeared that Hall was trying to hit this ball a mile. Wasn't that far away. Not, certainly not as far as last week's field goal. Well, last week, the longest game-winning field goal in the history of the league in the fourth quarter of overtime in a postseason game of the final regular season game for a team going to the playoffs. Second game-winning field goal in Jets history, longer than 40 the last two minutes. And what surprised me most of all, longest regular season field goal ever in this stadium. And he followed it right up with a monstrous kickoff last week. Yeah. He did, and that was a big one with 59 seconds to play. Here's Wheatley beginning this drive with a four-yard gain. Saturday, February 9th, we'll wrap up ABC. Or No, that's Kevin Moore playing. Yeah, that's Oahu. Oh, sorry. John Abraham will be there. Second year Jet defensive end. It's second down and five. Gannon slings it out. It's caught by Brown. And Tim Brown takes the ball out to the 47-yard line. And that's a first down for one of the great receivers of all time. That may be a rushing attempt because it appeared that that was a backward pass by Rich Gannon as uh, Tim Brown bellied back from the line of scrimmage. Check this out. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be uh, go down as a rushing attempt for Tim Brown and a darn good one. Brown this season caught 91 passes and Jerry Rice caught 83. The numbers just about mirroring each other. First and 10, Gannon throws. There's Rice. Ryan Rice gets chased out of bounds finally by Damian Robinson as he takes the ball to the 25 on his second big reception. This one 29 yards. A 29 yarder to go with a 26 yarder earlier. But Rice looking like a young Colt across the middle here against the zone. Damian Robinson closing but way too late. But again Rich Gannon has got not only time he's got room in the pocket. Jets are offering no resistance with a pass rush. And Gannon is now six of his first six. He's been perfect for 72 yards. From the 25-yard line to the ground. And this is Garner picking up two with a minute and a half to go in the opening period. You know, we talked about how that tempo is so important to John Gruden and the Raiders. He doesn't want the Jets to be allowed to catch their breath. He knows how difficult it is to travel across the country, and it especially affects the big guys, the offensive and defensive linemen. Ted Cottrell, the defensive coordinator, used to be at Buffalo, might be interviewed not long from now for the opening in San Diego. Certainly a head coaching candidate is Cottrell on second down and seven. Gannon throws, and somehow Jerry Rice <laughs> looked like he was going to make the catch, started to fall down, and the pass sailed behind him. Stop the presses kind of stuff when when Jerry Rice doesn't come up with a pass that appears headed right for him. That might be the only defense you can work against, Rice, the invisible cobblestone. <laughs> well, I tell you what, this pass protection is absolutely perfect again for Gannon, but here Rice does stumble. He tripped himself. That was enough to make that ball go off his shoulder. So that's the first incomplete pass in the game. Testaverde three for three, Gannon now six for seven. Randy Jordan is in the game on third down and seven. Gannon slings it, and that's too high. That sailed on him. Intended for Tim Brown, who'd gotten open at the five. It's the very definition of rhythm, isn't it, Dano? You get those first six, you just pop and sidearm, everything works, then one goes askew, and they can all start going askew. Sometimes Rich Gannon will hurry his throw. His motion will become a little bit short. That time it appeared that the shorter motion caused that ball to sail. You saw Janikowski missing his last three attempts of 35 or more. This is a 41-yard attempt. Shane Leckler at the hold. Snap and placement are good. And so is the kick. So Janikowski has accounted for the Raiders scoring tonight with 44 ticks left in the opening period. Oakland six and the Jets nothing. Janikowski to kick off, and this time it is a short kick. Fielded at the 11-yard line as Chad Morton takes it away from Lamont Jordan. And Morton is into Raider territory before he trips and goes down at about the 48-yard line. Chip trip near where Rice tripped. 41-yard run back. The 48-yard line. Oakland leading 6-0, waning moments of the first quarter. 
Festiverde throws underneath to Curtis Martin, and Martin gets taken down by William Thomas at the 41-yard line. Earlier today, in case you missed it, Chicago next week. Meanwhile, if the Jets win here, the Jets will be going to Pittsburgh. If the Raiders win tonight, they go to New England. And that is the end of the first quarter. Oakland leading 6 to nothing. And Wild Card Saturday returns from Oakland after this from our ABC station. Evening has fallen as we come back to Oakland. Al Michaels with Dan Fouch, Dennis Miller, Eric Dickerson, and Melissa Stark. Second period begins. Jets have the ball at the Oakland 42-yard line on second and four. Raiders on top on two Janikowski field goals. And the handoff to Curtis Martin, who gets knocked down at the 34. And we have our first... No, no penalty. I was going to say we had our first play, but we did not. Well, both offenses have been dominating in this first half. Uh, both quarterbacks real hot. Testaverde, four for four. Gannon, six of eight. The Raiders have used four different rushers and four different receivers. And Curtis Martin, five carries for 34 yards. Only had 50 against the Raiders last week. I think Edwards has got to feel good about Ropa doping out of that quarter only at six zip. Yeah. We have not had a penalty in this game, Dick Hantak is the referee, in case you're wondering. And the pass is incomplete. Lavernius Coles dropped it. Well, Coles kind of slipped as he tried to adjust to the ball that was thrown just a little bit behind him by Testaverde. So that's Testaverde's first incomplete of the night. You can see Lavernius's legs go out. It's almost as if he was planning on spinning away from Eric Allen and going down the sideline. That plays completely about where the ball's delivered. That's where Warner kills you <laughs> when you play the Rams. Second down and 10 from the 34-yard line. And this is Martin. And boy, the Raiders were off the ball very quickly on the defensive side of the ball, Dan. Well, they had a great game last week anticipating the snap count of Vinny Testaverde. One thing the Jets have to do tonight is Mix it up. Here is big Grady Jackson right in the middle here as he goes unblocked. Kevin Mawai and Randy Thomas as Vinny hands off, and there is Grady Jackson. If Grady Jackson can go unblocked, anybody can. Lone third assignment. Third down and 10. Vinny comes back the other way. They set up the screen, and the pass is caught by Richie Anderson. Anderson is stopped at the 27-yard line, and that'll bring John Hall out again for about a 45-yard attempt. Vinny would have liked to have seen uh, Richie Anderson be a little more patient there after he caught that ball. He kind of didn't allow his blockers time to set up their blocks and get him to that first down. I'm sure somebody tried to calm Hall down during this little hiatus because he tried to knock that first one back into San Francisco. This is the same difference, but the other direction. 45-yarder. Tom Tupa to hold. And this time, it is good. So he's what's known as a north-to-south kicker. <laughs> Three open. Tremendous college career, of course. Heisman at Notre Dame. John Hall to kick off now for the Jets. Back to his 45-yard field goal. This kick taken by Terry Kirby at the seven-yard line. Kirby up to the 30. Rich Gannon. We talked between games about the fact that Rich at one point, not long ago, within the past month, thought of very highly in terms of an MVP candidate. But then, of course, the Raiders going down to defeat in their last three games, and that ended any possibility of that happening. Kurt Warner won the award. Marshall Falk wound up second in the balloting. Well, Dan has got to use his noggin when he meets out that uh, Paris Island thing. That vibe has never really played in Raiderland. From the 30-yard line on first down. Gannon surveying goes to the outside catch is made there by Jerry Porter one of the big three. things about uh, when, when you do criticize players and and uh, I, I used to ride my players pretty good too but there's always a fine line there of balance where you want to make sure that the guys know that you're doing it uh, in a way that is positive 
in a way that uh, is not a personal attack and in a way that is all for the good of the team. And, and that's the thing that you got to keep in mind. And Rich did say we, and he included himself when he talked about the Raiders needing more deep, uh, discipline. From the 42-yard line on first down. Wheatley up to the 48. And the great thing about the relationship between John Gruden and his quarterback, Rich Gannon, is they're, they're you know, they don't care about speaking their minds or gesturing or uh, what, what effect it might have on the other guy because they're both passionate about the game. They're both considered hotheads, perfectionists in their own ways. But they are 10-3. and three. They are in the playoffs, and they are winning this game. Well, he can parrot the fact that he feels he might need more discipline, too. But if he gets any more discipline, he's going to implode. Second, second and five from the 48-yard line. Wheatley runs into his own man, Richie, and that knocks him down at the 48-yard line. Yeah, yeah, Gannon might need a little less discipline. You think back on great Raider quarterbacks, they got to go right to the snake. And he didn't exactly do it with Arthur Murray footprints, did he? No way. Daryl LaMonica, the mad bomber. They've had their share of wild men at quarterback. Yeah. Dan, when, when a quarterback says we need more discipline, I mean, specified, bed check, receivers running wrong routes, exactly think, what, what does he mean? Attention to detail, getting your head in the playbook, making sure you're reading the game plan, and making sure you're taking that preparation out onto the field. Meanwhile, Wheatley limped off. It's third down and five. And Gannon swings it to the outside, and Rice makes the catch. He's covered one-on-one -on -one by Marcus Coleman. Just runs a, a simple out pattern. First down of the 43. Now, it's simple because Gannon can get back and be sure that he can time it out on the outside. Rice with a great move. Do you see how he lowered his hips? Very sharp cut. Again, taking advantage of Marcus Coleman. But I hate to beat the dead horse, but the dead horse is the dead pass rush of the New York Jets. Nowhere near Rich Gannon on his first 10 throw. Nothing so far, not even close to getting to him. First and 10, Garner is in the backfield at the 43-yard line. Again, tremendous protection, no pressure. Gannon takes off, slides to a stop at the 31-yard line. First down. He's got that slide down. It looks like the Georgia Peach coming in. Well, he also had Charlie Garner wide open down the sideline. Might have been a touchdown. But watch the protection. Not only do they keep the Jets on the line of scrimmage, they're going to open up a lane for Gannon to step up and then take off. But what he, Gannon doesn't see as he's stepping up, up and taking off is Charlie Garner. He scores yeah. if he gets the ball. And the first thing Gannon did after he popped up, he realized it. He just looked over to, Gannon, or to Garner right there and said, Charlie, oh, man, I should have thrown you the ball. Might have been a little premature on that first down call because they spot the ball just shy of it where he begins to slide. And he winds up a couple of inches short of the first down, second and inches at the 33-yard line. And you know what? If he continues to have that much time to throw, he will find Charlie Garner and Jerry Rice and Tim Brown, and the Raiders will get some long pass completions for touchdowns tonight. Jets show a five-man front and a blitz here on second and inches, and it's Garner at the 30-yard line. First down. Well, a perfectly played game tonight. No penalties for either team. Both offenses are just in control, but then you got to go back to this score here. The defense is bending and bending and bending, but not giving up the touchdowns. See, Gruden had a list of a thousand plays with two or three hundred isolated there at the red. It was key plays. <laughs> it's Gruden himself who speaks into the helmet of Rich Gannon. Gain of three here. Charlie Garner takes the ball to the 28. ED, what about the game so far? What, what's your take? Well, I can tell you, Rich Gannon is having a lot of success throwing the football because of the running game and the way that they're using their running backs. They're using Charlie Garner as their slasher, the quick trap plays, the draw plays. Then what they do, they bring in their hammer, which is Tyrone Wheatley, and really wear this defense down. And where I believe you'll see the success of that is in the fourth, third, and fourth quarter when the defense will get really, really tired, Al. We'll keep an eye on Wheatley because he did limp off after the last time he carried the ball. Second down and seven. Garner is the running back. Gannon slips, and that's about the only way the Jets have been able to get any pressure on Gannon. Rich does it himself. Marvin Jones will get a gift sack. 
Yeah, it's a five man rush. So uh, Ted Cottrell finally brings pressure against Gruden's offensive line. There's Marvin Jones, 55, coming on the blitz. There's the slip by Gannon and the first sack of the night for the uh, for the Jets. And Marvin didn't come down nearly as hard on him as the Goose did last year in the playoffs. Third down and 14. That's a huge sack because they don't pick up the first down. They may be out of field goal range. Finally a flag. But they might have got uh, Lincoln Kennedy for flinching. Dick Hantak. First time we've heard from Dick tonight. He should be in uh, good throat. False start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Still third down. Meanwhile, John Abraham has been sitting out this series. Their leading sacker going to the Pro Bowl. 13 sacks. Get a report on Abraham, who's just been on the bench for this entire series. Third down and 19. Just a four-man rush, dumped off over the middle, caught off the shoe tops by Randy Jordan, and Jordan is able to take the ball inside the 30 to the 28 and at least position Janikowski for a field goal attempt. Pretty good indication when Gannon uh, made the signal at the line of scrimmage that he was looking for the dump off against the zone. He read that the Jets were going to be in a zone. No sense trying to force one and risk the interception. Might as well set up Janikowski, who appears to be healthy and hot. 21 yarder a 41 yarder go both going through this one will be 45 yards Shane Lecter will spot the ball at the 35 yard line and Janikowski that's the end of the cellulitis no question about that we should all have cellulite <laughs> three for three is Sebastian the number one pick last year in a game of field goals 9-3 Oakland well Rich Gannon and the Raiders with three field goals, Janikowski now sends a bouncing kickoff inside the 10 after it is juggled by Chad Morton. And Morton does a great job recovering out past the 40, gets by Janikowski, and finally Jerry Porter knocks him down at the 47-yard line. That's an incredible effort by Chad Morton. 46 yards, each one of them well earned, 9-3. Tonight, the Raiders have run twice as many plays as the Jets for more than twice as much yardage and had the ball nearly twice as much. So the Raiders have dominated offensively, yet lead only by six on three field goals. Now after the great run back by Chad Morton, Vinny and the Jets start from the 48 with Curtis Martin picking up five to the 43, tackled by... Greg Beekert. Paul Hackett is the offensive coordinator of the New York Jets. Last year he was the head coach at the University of Southern California. Paul's been around a long time, assistant with Dallas at Kansas City. In fact, when Paul was there, Dan, he helped resurrect Rich Gannon's career. There's no question, and he, it's a combination of a West Coast offense and also the things that Dan Henning ran when he was the offensive coordinator for Al Groh and also the offense that Vinny is most comfortable with. Second and six, Lamont Jordan is in the game, split wide to the right. They keep the ball on the ground, and they give it to Martin, and Curtis takes it to the 30-yard line. May be the most underrated running back in the league, and has been that way for several years. Dorsett makes the tackle. I thought it was uh, interesting when Herman Edwards told us the reason why he's the most underrated, because he doesn't make spectacular plays. This is all he does. Just gets the ball in the eye formation, makes a couple of guys miss, gets up the field, moves the chains, and just makes yards. Plus, he was in the appreciable shadow of the tuna there for a few years. He he is a second quarter superstar. He has averaged 6.2 yards per carry this season in this period. Testaverde throws, and that is caught by Lavernius Coles. And the former Florida State star takes the ball to the 22. When Martin came into the league as a third-round pick of the New England Patriots out of the University of Pittsburgh in 95, since that point in time, well, take a look. He has more yardage than anybody. Yeah. You know, when Bill Parcells gives you his stamp of imprimatur as a tough guy, says he can't break you, 
<laughs> that says Reams about Curtis Martin. Meanwhile, Bill Parcells very much back in the news. A lot of reports indicating that Parcells is going to coach Tampa Bay next year and Tony Dungy is going to get fired. It's been talked about all day. Meanwhile, with Jordan at quarterback, the snap goes back to him on a trick play that the Raiders say, wait a minute, we've seen this before. Well, they have seen it a couple of times. Lamont Jordan did this when uh, he was, when the uh, Jets played the Colts. Had more success with it. Here's Vinny outside here. And here's Lamont Jordan. It's going to be a draw play. And the Raiders uh, did some scouting. They knew this was coming. But don't be surprised if the Jets don't come back to it a little bit more and maybe run an option play. Vinny getting after Harris on the outside. Third down and five now from the 25-yard line. Martin. And he can only get to the 23. Derek Gibson makes the tackle. And that will force them to settle for a field goal attempt of roughly 40 yards. That's a couple of good plays tonight by Derek Gibson on Curtis Martin in the open field. Raiders number one pick is the dime back when the Raiders go to six defensive backs. He's come through for them here in the first half. We've had six possessions in the game, six field goal attempts, and there is John Abraham obviously not feeling well. He's been on the bench. And back he goes to the locker room. 41-yard field goal attempt. And it is blocked. It is blocked by Anthony Dorsett. Here's Anthony Dorsett jumping to the inside, inside side of Rick Lyle as Charles Woodson was lined up on the outside. Too much speed and a block by Anthony Dorsett. It's the son of Tony Dorsett, played with Tennessee in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, came here last season, blocking John Hall's kick. Looked like his old man hitting that hole, man. Yeah. <laughs> so John Gruden's team up by six. 3.05 to go in the first half from the 34-yard line. Throws over the middle, caught midfield. Jerry Rice, first down, 49-yard line. That's got an update on the defensive end, John Abraham. What's happening, Melissa? Well, Al, you were right. Official word from the team, he is under the weather. A few minutes ago, he came over to the sidelines. He vomited. They gave him oxygen. He's just looked very subdued. Of course, now he's in the locker room with the doctor undergoing further evaluation. We will keep you posted. Yeah, when we saw him, he didn't look hurt. He looked sick, and that is the case. Derek Mogu is the replacement for him as Garner breaks free, and finally Coleman runs him down at the 21-yard line. Well... Everybody on the Jets sidelines got to be feeling as queasy as Abraham after that run. Maybe maybe the tri-continental trek is starting to wear him down. Well, they're going to run right at Obagu, number 99 right there behind Lincoln Kennedy. So John Gruden noticed that Abraham went in the locker room. He goes right after his replacement. And Garner down the sidelines, and the Raiders are close to the red zone now. Two minutes left in the half. First and ten at the two-minute warning. Open from the 23-yard line, and the catch is made by Tim Brown at the 16. Now, we made a lot about uh, Rich Gannon's comments. The best way to lead is by example. Right now, he's only missed two passes all night. Offensive line doing a good job. He's in rhythm, feeling good about things. Team, the tempo is good for the Raiders. Now they got to get touchdowns and not settle for field goals. Gannon, 11 out of 13 for 127. Second and five from the 17. Gannon caught Rice. And Rice's forward progress will net him a first down at the 10-yard line. Rice continues to assault every <laughs> human physicality, Tenet. You know, he's just so precise in his routes. There's no wasted motion. Comes off the line full speed. Knows what he needs for the first down. 
and delivers as usual. First and goal, Raiders have all of their timeouts, but right now they're going to take all of the time they can off the clock and leave the Jets with nothing as Garner takes the ball to the eight. You're playing two games here, obviously trying to score. On the other hand, you're trying to leave the Jets with no opportunity if you score to get the ball back and do something. Now timeout is called by Oakland with 44 ticks left, and we can tell you this wild card game is being brought to you by Abraham questionable for the second half. You know, Absolutely. He's, he's got to be really sick to, you know, a young kid like that to miss a game this big. He's got to be just wasted. Wayne Corbett, who is not going to factor in this game tonight. Rick Lyle right now has replaced Abraham. Crockett and Kirby are the setbacks here on second down and goal. Gannon. Buys time, throws, caught, Brown stopped at the three-yard line, so it's going to be third down and goal. It's amazing, though, that uh, Gannon looks so calm because he's not getting, not getting any pressure at all. Now Gruden wants a timeout. And gets one. Raiders have one left third and goal coming up. Six seconds remaining in the first half. Rich Gannon just over to consult with John Gruden. Of course, the Raiders, one of the teams with a head coach, not only calls the plays, but is on the mic into Gannon's helmet. Third and goal. And Zach Crockett is in the game at tailback behind John Ritchie. Extra tight end in Jeremy Brigham. But don't forget that man right there, Tim Brown. Come up in a very tight formation. Brown on a wing. Gannon, good protection. Throws, caught. Touchdown, Brown. Beautiful, Dano. I'm always amazed, Dan, that a guy like Brown, a guy you know they're going to look to first if they can, can get so open. And really the only viable receiver out there, don't they know the guy's going to the Hall of Fame? Don't they know he's won the Heisman Trophy? He's the only wide receiver in the game. He was totally uncovered. Janikowski to tack on the extra point. So it's a perfect drive. They get in for seven, and they take most of the time off the clock. Now it's either Aaron Glenn or Damian Robinson that does not stay with Tim Brown. Brown goes right to the corner, back to the end zone. And is he wide open? Just a touch. Gannon's not going to overthrow this one, is he? Puts it right on his shoulder. I guess if you're drawing up a defensive breakdown in a clinic, you'd draw that play, wouldn't you? But, I mean, you, it appeared that they were playing zone, okay? Well, zone coverage on the three-yard line is tough to pull off. you got to play some man-to-man. -man. you got to put two men on Tim Brown. Best of all possible worlds for the silver and black, too. Only 22 seconds left, and they do deliver the big big punch to New York there letting them know they can indeed get in the end zone and they're not going to be given a pass in the second half first touchdown of the game coming after the blocked field goal by Dorsett now the Jets are going into that halftime locker room really cognizant how up against it they are and maybe that when your mind's a little weak maybe that's when that jet lag really sinks in now the Jets right now just trying to think about getting something going offensively in the second half. Right now, their only hope right here is a very good run back after the Janikowski kickoff to at least set up a possible field goal attempt. And he sends a bouncing ball down to Lamont Jordan. And he brings it back up to the 36-yard line with 17 seconds. That had dentistry, marathon man, Larry <laughs> Olivier with a drill written all over it, didn't it? First and ten, ball of the 36-yard line as Testaverde on a draw play gives it to Curtis Martin. And Martin takes it up to the 49-yard line. And the Jets are going to take a timeout to try to set up one more play to get home within field goal range. Yeah, they need about 20 yards. But this was a, a, a great start to this drive with just 17 seconds to go. Curtis Martin with a huge hole again on the draw and a strong hard tackle by Johnny Harris. New York trying to get into field goal range with the ball at the 48-yard line. Testaverde 
going deep into coverage and trying to draw the flag was Coles, but Eric Allen was right there, had position, knocked it away. Raiders defensively were bunching the middle of the field and playing single coverage on the outside. Vinny trying to get that jump ball, as you said, Al. But Eric Allen, you're not going to get it against a veteran like Eric Allen, who's playing with more brains right now than brawn and physical talent. Yeah, that's the dual-edged sword for Eric Allen. When you make that play, you're mature. When he gets behind you, you're old. Yeah. He was old last week when Coles went by him, wasn't he? Barring a defensive foul, it's the end of the half here. Then he escapes, then throws. It's caught by Coles at the 25 and looking for somebody to lateral to and he laterals it to Martin who's the perfect guy but now Curtis needs some help and it's like the Stanford Cal play with everything but the band and that's the way the first half ends well why not that Stanford Cal play took place about five miles to the north in 1982 I think it was no tuba player here <laughs> no but Tom Tupa's here <laughs> end of the first half and the Oakland Raiders trying to win a trip to New England leading 16-3. Here's Melissa. All right, Al John, you guys lost the three games coming into tonight. You're completely dominating. What's the biggest difference with this team? I have no idea. We're just playing a little bit better, but we got a long way to go. And you're losing your voice. Thanks, John. Al Michaels, Dan Fouch, Dennis Miller, Eric Dickerson, Melissa Stark as we wrap up Wild Card Saturday. Philadelphia knocked off Tampa 31-9. Here we start the second half with the Raiders leading by 13 and Janikowski kicking off to the Jets. At the six yard line, Chad Morton, a couple of real nice run backs in the first half. And this time he gets wrapped up up at the 27 yard line by Terry Kirby. Let's check in with Melissa Stark. Well, Al Herman Edwards told us yesterday that if he's learned anything about the character of his team this year, it's that they stay calm, they do not panic under pressure. He said they're more mad at themselves than anything right now. In the second half, they want to finish off their blocks and open up the passing game. Defensively, he said it's very hard to get pressure on Rich Gannon without John Abraham. They want to blitz a little bit more. As far as Abraham is concerned, he has the flu. He received fluids intravenously this morning, but Edwards was not optimistic that he'll return. And that is a huge blow because he was their leading sacker with 13. Now Benny starts from the 28-yard line. With a roll to his left, the throw, and that's incomplete to the sideline. Intended for Kevin Swain. When we look at the first half uh, stats, you got to realize we had eight possessions in the first half and zero punts. So offensively, both teams have done a good job of moving the ball. But for the Jets, Vinny has been solid Curtis Martin has done well but the Jets on third down have only been able to convert one of four opportunities that's why they only have three points second and ten from the 28 yard line and Tessa Verde had the receiver fall down that was Wayne Corbett and it's the first pass so much as intended for Corbett tonight. This is a bad start for the Jets. Testaverde has a ball dropped on his first throw to Swain, and now the reliable one, Wayne Corbett, slips just as Testaverde delivering the ball. You, know, you wonder about Corbett. He didn't practice that much this week, and the Jets sort of poo pooed any injury. Yeah, and it's strange to hear that he was tired. I mean, this guy never gets tired. He's like the Energizer Bunny. Third down and 10 from the 28 yard line. Lester Verde slings it up to the 45, and that is Coles making a great grab and getting a first down up at the 50, covered by Eric Allen as a gain of 22. Well, Coles figures I'll make the Corbett catch for him. Spectacular catch. He didn't look like Wayne Corbett. Last week, Corbett had a catch just about like this where he jumped, uh, juggled the ball to himself. Here it is on the outside. And that tackle by Eric Allen is a touchdown saver because if he makes this catch and run without the tackle, he's gone. And so after a third and ten, it's a first down at midfield. Opening drive, second half. End around. Ball handed to Coles. Coles able to turn the corner. And he turns it into a gain of seven to the 43-yard line.
the Jets in a position down by 13. In the history of the NFL, only two road teams trailing by 13 or more points at the half have won. It was Detroit back in 1957, and most recently in 97, when the Vikings beat the Giants at Giants Stadium. And that's it. On second and three, Testaverde slings it into traffic. Prevet juggles. Beekert says no. Officials say yes. He makes the catch at the 32. Uh, this is an incredible catch by Krebet as he's going into traffic. He knows for one thing he's going to get murdered on this reception. Beats Woodson to the punch on the inside there. Watch the juggle here. Eyes are on the ball. Bounces off his chest down to his knees and he hangs on for the reception. Read that 2 and 79 graphic, Al. If history's taught us anything, it's not to give up on a Herman Edwards team. <laughs> no matter how late the game. Yeah, this year they've won three games by one point, another game by two points. Here they give the ball to Curtis Martin, back to the basics, inside the 20 to the 18-yard line, and that moves the chains. Well, they started out with four, five straight passes. That will set up the draw play every time, and that's been the best run tonight for the Jets. Curtis Martin on the draw. Big hole there, Richie Anderson leading up on William Thomas. And this is a good looking drive for the Jets to start the second half. But now they're in the red zone, they've got to get into the end zone. This drive started at the New York 28. Now at the 18 yard line, they give the ball not to Anderson, instead Vinny Rowling nearly gets sacked. And then gets just about Vinny back to the line of scrimmage. Almost a disaster, but he turns it into no game. Well, Vinny's Achilles isn't re-blowing out on that play. It's never going to re-blow out again. Tony Bryant's most surprised guy in the house. He wasn't able to get uh, Lavernius Coles on the reverse earlier in this drive, and that time he couldn't bring down old man Vinny, 38 years old. we got the hops. Second down nine. In fact, he gained a yard. And they spread everybody out. They have Martin in the game. They have Anderson in the game, but spread out of an empty backfield. On second and nine, Testaverde throws, and it is caught by Crebet. So after a silent first half, Crebet would... John Hall for the point after, after the Jets go 72 yards. And that makes it a six-point game again. Big, big early second half drive for the Jets. We we went down by 13 at the end of the first half and now back to within six. At third and ten on the first series, the pass to Coles to midfield. Here's Terry Kirby taking the kick. And run out of bounds at the 27 yard line. But Corbett gets into the game after a completely silent first half and puts the Jets right back into the game. The Always coming back on Oakland this year, huh? Doesn't matter the sport. Indication baseball clearly here. This is where Derek Jeter made that phenomenal play. First down from the 28-yard line. And that is Charlie Garner taking it up to the 30. Speaking of Derek Jeter, just like and then the uh, the culmination last week. Not to mention the catfish jumped ship years ago to go to New York. <laughs> Second and seven from the 30-yard line. That's caught by John Ritchie, the fullback, who takes it up to the 40-yard line. His first handle of the night. And that cut just won't heal. I don't think he wants it to heal. He wants to go, go sit up in the stands with the rest of those folks. Take a look at the start track for the first half. Rich Gannon, a spectacular first half as they start the second half now with a no huddle offense much as they got the things going in the first half tonight Al trying to tire the Jets who are still minus John Abraham out with the flu Tyrone Wheatley is in the game as the running back that's Wheatley with the football picking up five getting it across the 45 yard line well, I like where the Jets are sitting right now you see their quarterback for Oakland at 14 out of 16 <laughs> you're only down six points on the other guy's turf you know, they're down, but they're still hanging in there, man. That, that loss of uh, John Abraham, Sean Ellis is going to have to step up now. He is the best pass rusher that Ted Cottrell has left on that defense. 
Second down and six now from the 45-yard line. Gannon to the 50-yard line. And close to a first down is Jerry Rice. Very close to it. Let's check in with Eric. Well, Al, I'm sure John Gruden was not too pleased about that last drive by the Jets for a touchdown. He said that his team played very well in the first half. He said that one thing he wants to do is do a better job of running the foot. I mean, running the football, running the football more in the second half. He also says that he's very pleased the way his defense is played because his defense has given up a lot of big plays this year. He was very pleased, certainly with their first half performance. Not quite as pleased after that first drive in the second half here as the Jets march down the field. First and ten, the ball at the 49-yard line, under nine minutes to play in the third. Wheatley. Nowhere. That's really not Tyrone Wheatley's strength, is jumping to the outside. He's had a lot of success tonight. You can see as he gets up, a little bit frustrated. But his success will come between the tackles, but not to the outside. Eric Obagu, number 99, is playing defensive end here. It's a nice job of getting through the tackle of the tight end there, Jeremy Brigham, and bringing down Tyrone Wheatley. It's almost like he's running Garner's plays and Garner's running his plays, Dano. A little bit of a, a cross up there, you bet. Second and ten. Gannon has completed his last ten passes. Tim Brown, does he stay in bounds? The one official checks for the other. Yes, he does. I hate that when the officials have to talk to about it. If you see it, call it. You don't need help having to talk about it. Well, you need possession and both feet in bounds, and clearly they're looking at this upstairs to see whether they want to challenge it. And I, if, if I am the Jets, I send the flag right out there now. And they better hurry because the Raiders are at the line of scrimmage. Right. Trying to beat the clock. Not going to happen. There's the red it. flag. Right. I can't imagine what the two officials are talking about here. Because Brown is clearly out of bounds. I'm not even sure he was possessing the ball. Uh, I think the refs were just guessing. Beautiful effort, though, by Tim Brown. Well, maybe they were taken in like I was with the beauty of the mere catch. <laughs> they may have been. Because that's a stunning athletic move right there. Right foot down in the field of play. The left foot came down out of bounds. We have an incomplete pass. It will be third down on the 49-yard line. New York is not charged a timeout. Third down. No, seriously, no, I didn't violate some bill of secret. Ask Brian. <laughs> Brian just came in the booth. <laughs> Hi, Brian. <laughs> Now that ends Gannon's completion streak at 10 and brings the ball back to the 49-yard line where it's third down and 10. <laughs> now we're getting word, too, that John Abraham definitely will not be back in the game tonight, so with the flu, despite the intravenous or whatever they were trying to do to get him back into the game, he is done for the evening. Third down and 10, here come the Jets on a blitz, and the Raiders pick it up perfectly. Then Gannon buys time, throws, the pass is incomplete, crowd looks for a flag. There is none. Intended for Roland Williams. Steve Martin is chasing down Rick Gannon out of the pocket. Raiders had the right call, but Gannon's going to throw the ball behind Roland Williams and Sean Ellis with the right forearm just sweeps Williams out of the way. Ball was uncatchable. Right. That's why there's no penalty. Exactly. Here is the first punt of the game. The Pro Bowl punter, Shane Leckler, sends one down inside the five. And Santana Moss did a good job of deking a fair catch and letting it go into the end zone. Jets take it at the 20, down by six. With 7.47 remaining in the third quarter. The Jets have a first and ten at their own 20-yard line. Testaverde throws on a slant intended for Trebet, who can't make the catch. He's covered by Charles Woodson, breaking up the play. Bad turf toe and all. 
Well, a number of times teams have in the last regular season game met and then come back to meet in the playoffs the following week, but no team has gone on the road in both the last game and in the postseason game the next week and won. And that's what the Jets are attempting to do tonight. Second and 10 from the 20 yard line. Here comes the blitz, but there was a whistle, and there's no play as Regan Upshaw knocks down Vinny Testaverde. The whistle had sounded before the play. And uh, Dick Hantak did not like the way that Regan Upshaw took down Vinny Testaverde. So we, we have the offsides, false start against the Jets, but the penalty on Upshaw is what Hantak threw. That's a rep call on Upshaw, too, in addition to it being a little over the top. He's got a rep. I know he's not Brian Greasy's favorite guy. False start. Offense number 69. By rule, that penalty is declined. Personal foul. Number 91. Loving the passer after the play was blowing dead. 15 yards. First down. That's the key. The whistle was blown, and Upshaw did not hear it and kept going and slammed just the birdie. That's a real tough call against Upshaw. Very tough. I think there are just some times when the officials have to be more realistic when they're making calls on roughing the passer. That is a huge play against Gruden's Raiders. Keep in mind, Gruden says Gannon is more intense than him. Who needs audio? Yeah, keep the lip readers away from the screen. Did you say Man. so now? First and 10 at the 35. Fake to Anderson, then the handoff to Curtis Martin. And he comes up to the 40-yard line. He stopped there. Flag comes in at the end of the play here. <laughs> well, after not having many penalties in the first half, we're catching up in a big hurry now. Vinny, not exactly the great Slidini with that play fake. Clearly the penalty against the Raiders, the clapping by Testaverde. Regan Upshaw and Kerry Jenkins <laughs> got involved. How about Gruden's takes? Continuing action foul. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense, number 91. Upshaw. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Well, they've got to cool him off, so they have to take him out of the game. No question about it. That's 30 yards in penalties in the last two plays. Unless you count in the short rush, the yardage that Curtis Martin got. And the Jets are all the way into Raider territory. Nobody buys into that Raider mythos more than Reagan Upshaw. First and 10 now as the Jets, thanks to the two penalties, have the ball in Raider territory. Lamont Jordan is the running back. Testaverde faking to him. Vinny going deep into traffic, and it's incomplete. He tried to get it in to Lavernius Coles, but he was bracketed on the play. Eric Allen covering and breaking it up. Well, Eric Allen is a, a veteran, played a lot of years in this league. And now he's coming off. Torrey James will come in to replace him. Looks like Allen's got some type of injury, but the Raider cornerbacks, so both Allen and Charles Woodson, are not as feared around the league as they once were. Big thing with Woodson, he hasn't been had much practice time because of that bad toe. He's still a marvelous athlete. Father him all year. There was James in the game. He mirrors Corbett, who's in motion. Pass underneath is caught by Gerald Soule, his first touch of the game, and he's down at the 40-yard line. Woodson's toe problems are now translated into stamina problems, Al, without the practice. Sure. Woodson announced tonight as a, a starter once again in the Pro Bowl as he completes his fourth season. Eric Allen now comes back into the game, and James comes out. Third down and four at the 39. Six and a half to go in the third. Raiders, who led by 13 at the half, leading by six.
Festiverde into traffic, and as it knocked away, it was deflected away on a pass intended for Cole. And we talk about Eric Allen, and you talk about the veteran experience he has. Watch him read this route by Coles. Get his eyes on the ball. He saw that Coles was going to the inside. The first thing he did is to see where Vinny was going with the ball. You can't get it any closer coverage than Eric Allen had that time on Lavernius Cole. Tom Tupa's first punt of the game. Tupa outstanding at dropping them inside the 20. Tries to do it here. And the fair catch is made by Tim Brown of the 16. Not John Gruden's favorite series of the night. But it doesn't hurt him. Except in terms of field position. On the second Saturday night in January, Raiders up by six. As you look at Jerry Rice, you look at Tim Brown there. This drive beginning at the 15-yard line. And Gannon stepping up in the pocket, throws underneath, and having to fall down to make the catch was James Jett, who's been around a long time, ninth year, but relegated to a reserve role. Jerry Rice, meanwhile, I would say ending his career, but who knows the way he is going. Phenomenal numbers, obviously. He's lapped the field in not only in the regular season, but in career playoff marks as well. As you can see, holds the significant records in postseason as well as regular season. As Gardner takes it up to the 24-yard line, a little short of the first down. Charlie Gardner's got such great feet. I mean, he was crushed there, but his feet never stopped. In fact, they went in reverse, and he backed up for two or three yards after the big hit. Watch as he hits off the right side of the uh, Jets defense here. He'll get hit, and then because he doesn't stop his feet, he just puts him in reverse. Now third down and one, Wheatley in the game. Little toss back to Wheatley. Gets around the corner, picks up the first down. 20 more to the 40. And when you play a team six days apart as these two teams are playing, that is an example of what you do to change the game plan. They come in with the heavy look of running the power up the middle. They fake it to Crockett, flip it outside. The Jets were caught thinking that it was going to be power up inside. That is game planning on the second game in a short period of time. And the big man gets the ball into the safe house of the outside arm. Nice attention to detail. 16-yard pickup from the 40-yard line on first down. Gannon rifles it over the middle, and that's into the arms of Charlie Garner for a first down to the 43-yard line. You know, not only can Charlie Garner put his legs in reverse, he can roll down the field. As he catches his ball, the ball will force him to the ground, but the whistle doesn't blow. So what do you do? Just keep rolling. One, two, three, <laughs> get touched there. That's five yards. He averages four and a half a roll. <laughs> That's regular for it. Garner 66 on the ground, 27 more in receptions. First and 10 up at the 44-yard line of the Jets. Garner again. Fights for a couple to the 41-yard line. A reminder of the week after the Super Bowl because the staff that coaches the Pro Bowl team is the staff that loses the conference championship game. That's where he was last. Yes, he was. Second and seven. And Gannon airing it out, and Brown tries to get free and can't. And Brown is exorcised because he thought Aaron Glenn was hand-holding. Uh, they were certainly battling going down the field. Glenn is 31. Brown is 81. Watch the hands going back and forth. Brown tries to push off. Glenn tries to hold. That's a good non-call because this ball was overthrown. Don't think Tim Brown could have caught it without the contact. Yeah, but if it's thrown, if it's not overthrown, is that enough for a call? I don't, it looks iffy, huh? I think those two guys would have to talk about it in the structure. <laughs> Third down and seven from the 40-yard line. Jets come on the blitz. Raiders pick it up beautifully, but then Gannon sidearms it and has it knocked down. That's a huge play for the Jets. Not able to get the sacks on Gannon 
last week, but they did knock down three of his passes. This is a huge play on a third down that keeps the Raiders out of field goal range and forces this punt. Watch Gannon with the sidearm. Rick Lyle, number 95, with his right arm, gets up in the air and foils that pass. Lyle in for the flu-like Abraham. Shane Lecker to punt. Santana Moss back to receive, and the kick goes into the end zone for a touchback. Jets will take it at the 20 with 2.39 remaining in the third quarter. 16-10 open. New York Jets have the ball at the 20-yard line. First and 10. And a little toss back. To Curtis Martin, who picks up three, and he's out of bounds at the 23. Dan, let's check out the QBs tonight, how they well, stack Rich, up. He's Rich Gannon has cooled off just a little bit. Uh, Testaverde got hot on that last drive when he hit three passes in a row or two drives ago. And, of course, the 17-yarder to Wayne Corbett for the touchdown. It uh, has made this game a lot more interesting. The defenses are settling in more now. We've had a couple of punts, and now the Jets are trying to long drive from their own 20. Second down and six at the 24-yard line. And that is caught by Coles. Beautiful play. Working to the outside. And Coles is out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Let's go down to the field. Check in with Melissa. Allen, injury update on Raiders cornerback Eric Allen. He is experiencing cramps in his left calf. He's going in and out of the game so they can work on it. So it's clearly affecting him. And uh, Torrey James is the guy who keeps coming in and out with him. And he was covering Coles on that last play. Now Allen comes back in for this play. First and 10 at the 44-yard line. Benny to the outside to Anderson. And Anderson is the ball alive. No whistle. It was fumble. Raiders recover it. Brady Jackson. Ball was ripped out by Johnny Harris as Anderson was stumbling, trying to get to the first down marker. And Johnny Harris came up and just ripped it loose as Greg Beekert hit him low. Testaverde with a lot of time to throw. He finds Anderson on the outside here. Watch. Johnny Harris rip it out with his right hand and big Grady Jackson will take the air out of the ball as he falls on it. Great play by Harris to rip it loose. Second jet turnover tonight. Oakland has none. And as Garner takes the ball up to the 49, that means in the last two games, five jet turnovers none for Oakland and you remember that this team uh, the Jets led the NFL in turnover ratio at a plus 18 so uncharacteristic of the Jets to have these turnovers the last two games against the Raiders and yet they won last week's and they are still hanging in here amazing second down and six they won two games during the regular season minus three in turnovers the other was against Carolina and that's Rice on a slant Jerry Rice to the three. You don't tomahawk chop a ball out from Jerry Rice from behind. See that cover up. 47 yards. And a classic Jerry Rice post pattern. Gets to the inside at full speed off the line of scrimmage and an extra gear to get inside the five yard line. His 24th playoff game of this great career and please, Jerry, whatever you do, don't retire. On first and goal, Charlie Garner to the one and a half yard line. Forget retire, he's going to renegotiate. He'll go to Canton, but I think he's a long way from Canton. Jerry Rice at the end of the third quarter. Raiders knocking on the door, up by six, back to Oakland after this from our ABC station. One of these guys goes on vacation next week. The other prepares for 
action next weekend. Herman Edwards would go to Pittsburgh. John Gooden would go to New England as we start the fourth quarter. The Raiders up by six and threatening as they have it second down and goal at the two-yard line. John Ritchie and Zach Crockett with the running backs. Crockett the tailback, Crockett with the ball, Crockett with a touchdown. And the Raiders are going to go for two with a 12-point lead. Give added rest to Seb Janko's cellulitis addled foot. And a smart move by John Gruden. <laughs> oh, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> Good math. <laughs> Two-point conversion. They'll try it on the ground. They get it. Garner. Charlie Garner adds the deuce to make it a 14-point just... game. During the regular season, Zach Crockett scored six touchdowns. Al talked about how he is the short yardage specialist. Well, he's 6'2", 240 pounds, going behind a twin in John Ritchie at about the same size. And that's about as easy as you're going to get in for Zach Crockett. Well, I talk about easy. Here he is over the right side one more time. And then Garner will get the two-pointer. Watch how easy this one is. The Jets standing straight up. They're looking tired. That defense just not strong enough to overcome the turnover by Richie Anderson. Yeah, the air just might have gone out of the Jets' mindset there. Johnny Harris made the strip. Richie Anderson, of course, with the fumble. And, you know, we're always talking about turnovers. Come on, Jerry, you are unbelievable. No other way to put it. I, I, whatever that is, <laughs> since I'm up here. <laughs> it said Ponce de Leon something on it. Man. Well, their stock just went through the roof, whatever what that was. Yeah. You don't think it was smokeless tobacco, do you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Redman at the 36-yard line, first down. Here's Coles. He's going to go back the other way. And all that for a gain of about a yard or so, up to the 37 tackle by Grady Jackson. Not exactly the way you draw it up, but the thought about getting the ball in Coles' hands is a good idea for the Jets. Right now, he has the ability and the speed to break a, a big one, but I don't think the Jets have to worry about that right now. A lot of time here. Fourth quarter just started. Just down by two touchdowns. Good field position to start this drive. Chuck Bresnahan, the Raider defensive coordinator. Second and nine from the 37. Corbett gets open in the seam and a first down at the Raider 43-yard line. Third grab tonight for Wayne. All of them very important. 20-yard pickup. Well, Corbett will get to the inside and, and he'll work against the safety. Anthony Dorsett here. Dorsett playing deep. Allows Corbett to cut across the middle. They do not want the Jet receivers to get behind him. Chuck Bresnahan and the Raider defense will allow this type of play right on down the field. At the 43, first down. Martin almost broke it. Comes close to picking up a first down before Charles Woodson. Well, obviously the Jets had to answer the call when they came out for the second half. Did so. <laughs> Looks like they might answer it again here. Curtis Martin is so patient. Watch as he just bides his time behind Kerry Jenkins. And Richie Anderson, this is a beautiful tackle by Woodson because this is big yardage if Woodson doesn't dive out here to make this tackle. Fighting off the block of Anderson and bringing down Martin, who is now five yards away from 100 on the night. Second and one at the 33-yard line. Oh, 
Then he just throws it away. Nothing happening downfield. Figured to take a little free shot on second and short. Boy, there could be an argument for intentional grounding because Vinny was mm. not out of the tight end area. And it's, as he threw the ball, he kept walking. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. He yes. was walking towards the uh, the tackle box or the tight end box. Watch Vinny throw this ball away. And then he'll just kind of stroll on over there to make sure that mm -hmm. Dick Hantak thought he might have been legal. Well, what possible rationalization could Hantak have for not calling that? Vinny got away with it. Third and one, Lamont Jordan is the running back. He gets the ball, he gets the first down. Good, hard running. And I guess if you're looking ahead to someday a successor to Curtis Martin, Jordan looks like he might be able to fill the bill. So it's a first down at the 27-yard line. 13, but they answer the bell right back. At the 27 now, first down. Martin back in the game. Corbett in motion. Swing it out to Curtis. Woodson takes him down at about the 24-yard line. He's taking a close look at Charles Woodson. He, he looks to be a little bit winded. Remember, he does not practice much during the week because of that bad toe. He spends a lot of time on the stationary bike to keep his conditioning up, but there's no such preparation for the real deal. Second down and seven at the 24-yard line. Into traffic, nearly picked off, and then Dorsett with a flag being thrown does not pick it off in the end zone. Woodson down on the turf. The pass was intended for Santana Moss, the Jets' number one draft choice, who's missed most of the season with a knee injury. Pass interference. Defense, number 24. Well, the Jets are not shying away from Charles Woodson. They know he's hurt. They know his conditioning may be suspect. Here's Santana Moss, the rookie, trying to get free from Woodson. Ooh, Woodson just shoves him. Boy, that's a tough call on Charles Woodson. Vinny with a lob shot over the middle. Lucky that Johnny Harris didn't just reach up and pick that off. Johnny Harris gave him a shot, too, but Santana Moss draws the penalty, and that gives the Jets a first and goal at the nine-yard line as they try to climb back into it. Jets penalty free tonight. On first and goal, Testaverde lofts it into the back of the end zone intending for the tight end Anthony Beck, a guy he looks for in the red zone, and it's incomplete with Harris covering on the play. Anthony Beck has five touchdown catches on the year, and he, all five of them have come from this part of the field. The lob to the back because Beck is six foot five. Johnny Harris with perfect coverage. Smothered him. Johnny Harris had a heck of a night. Pulled that fumble out earlier in the half. Great coverage there. Certainly has. And takes it to the four. Good running. Tackled by Chris Cooper. Setting up a third down and goal. And good blocking on the outside by Richie Anderson, who you know is just dying inside after having that ball pulled out by Harris. He was very tenacious, leading Curtis Martin to the outside. Watch number 20 at the fullback position on the counter. Kerry Jenkins with the block, and now Anderson working on Marquez Pope. Good hustle by Chris Cooper stopping that one, too. That puts Martin over 100 yards tonight. Third and goal from the four. Then he throws, and that's oh. incomplete. Knocked down by Woodson, intended for Coles. And now with 10-21 remaining, and you're down by 14, Herman's going to go for it. And if Charles Woodson has a healthy foot, he is in the end zone the other way. Watch him break on this ball. Just an instant sooner, he catches that ball easily and scores. Herman Edwards on fourth and goal. Down by 14, is chewing a chip shot field goal. I think it's a good call. Keep your eye on Curtis Martin. 
Then he throws. Oh. Caught. Caught by Anderson. A little bit of redemption right there. Touchdown, Richie Anderson on a fourth and hole for the conversion. And it's a seven-point game again. So the Jets just keep hanging in as they have almost all season long. From 14 down to seven down. 24-17. Oakland has the lead after the Jets draw to within seven and John Hall sends a bouncing ball down to Randy Jordan. And Randy gets run out of bounds into the Oakland bench at the 32 yard line. Herman's game. Hanging in. Up by seven. A little bit more than 10 minutes to play from the 32 yard line. And they begin with Garner behind Richie. Turning it upfield and fighting his way across the 35 to the 36 yard line. Well, Jerry Rice is playing in his 24th playoff game in his great career. 23 with the Niners. He got the Raiders started off early in the first quarter. That 26 yarder followed by this 29 yarder. And then when he, the Raiders needed it most, he takes the skinny post down to the three yard line. That led to a 14 point lead. Seven catches tonight for Jerry Rice. Seven for 141, not since Cliff Branch in 74 has a Raider receiver gained that much yardage. 27 seasons ago. Gannon throws, caught over the run, over the middle on the run by Jerry Rice. And his eighth grab of the night is another first down to the 44-yard line. He's been averaging 21 yards per catch. And that one is good for 21. Hey, how long is it before Jerry Rice catches a pass in this league on somebody who wasn't born when he started in the league? There he is in the slot. The, the quick step to the outside gets him away from Marcus Coleman. And Gannon, again, is right on target. Rice does not have to break stride to make the catch and make yardage. First down, Raiders down from the 44-yard line. To the outside and a great open field tackle made on James Jett by Aaron Glenn. Huge stop, of course, here for the Jets. Clock ticking down, coming off that imperative touchdown drive. And the Jets have to stop him here. And the one thing the Raiders have had trouble with in their three-game losing streak is finishing games. They have not found a way to put their opponent away. This drive is exactly what they need. And that pass that was errant intended for Roland Williams would have in effect ended the game in the Raiders favor last week second down and eight the handoff going to Terry Kirby as they go to Kirby coming out of the backfield and he goes nowhere Rick Lyle makes the stop well you got to wonder about uh, the choice not so much of the play but of the player for Gruden Garner's having a great night Wheatley looks sharp and Terry Kirby gets his first carry Third down, eight now at the 42-yard line. Well, they better keep their eye on Jerry Rice. That's all I know. In the slot. Lucky, lucky. Lucky. That's Brown in motion. Brown goes over the middle. The pass goes over the middle, but to Jerry Porter for a first down. So they go to the number three receiver for a big third and eighth conversion of 20 yards. And that's what happens when you keep too many eyes on Jerry Rice. Well, and Jerry Porter is uh, the heir apparent to Rice. He's got great ability. Good size and speed. Sure hands on that one. Making the tough catch over the middle. Gruden said the nice thing about him is he's able to play the third receiver out of either side. You know, brown spot or Rice's spot. For a young guy, that's pretty astute. Tyrone Wheatley is the eye back. He gets the football. It's one to the 21-yard line. Well, what that catch did is it put the Raiders in field goal position. A field goal here puts them up by 10 and in great position to win this playoff game. Offensive production for each team tonight. The Raiders over 400 yards. Raiders finishing fourth in the 
NFL in scoring this season. They put 24 up tonight, second down and nine at the 20 yard line. Down into the end zone to Rice. Wow. Off the charts. Either side of the bay, either side of the end zone. No matter, Dano. Well, watch the moves. Nobody does it better. A little fake there. Got him free from the bump by Aaron Glenn. And now Damian Robinson, 22, is too late to get over there. And Rice says, hey, that was easy. I do it all the time. 21-yard touchdown reception. Janikowski for the point after. Rice becoming the oldest man ever to score a postseason touchdown. Just the best. Simply the best. Fred Beleknikoff holds the Raider record for the postseason record most receiving yards in the game 190 in 1968. Jerry Rice tonight with 183. Beletnikov did it against the Jets in New York. Rice seven yards shy tonight after the touchdown grab. Santana Moss to run it back. And he runs into a wall up at the 25-yard line. Rice has got to get bumped by Aaron Glenn on this coverage. It's too deep. And to give the safety Robinson any shot at all at covering Rice in the end zone like that, Glenn's got to knock him off his stride. But how do you knock off Jerry Rice? You don't. And it's not like a guy like Rice needs any help, but Gannon has been completely dialed in all night to begin with. First and 10 for the Jets, down by two scores again. With only 5.45 left on the clock from the 25-yard line. Testa Verde for Trebet. Can't make the catch, but two flags come in. They're going to get Charles Woodson for impeding the progress of Corbett down the field with his arm. They call it the arm bar, where Woodson will put out his right hand and keep Corbett from getting to this ball. Interference, defense number 37, first down. Johnny Harris. I can't believe it's Johnny Harris. Maybe it's Lester Hayes. <laughs> Check the hands. <laughs> it's Charles Woodson right here. That's, that's the arm bar. Watch that right hand. That holds Corbett back. And still, Wayne almost makes a one-handed grab. Hey, Lester Hayes and Fred the Blitnikoff hugged each other once in the early 80s. They still haven't pried him apart. <laughs> Eric Allen, who had gone back to the locker room, is back in the game after the 26-yard penalty. First down, New York at the 49-yard line. Miss Vinny guns one, and that's caught at the 30-yard line by Santana Moss, the rookie out of Miami. Suffered a knee injury early in training camp and just made his way back about six weeks ago. Right, you go back to pass protection. Vinny's had it all night long. 29 throws, zero sacks, very little pressure out of the Raider defensive line. This Jet offensive line only allowed 19 sacks all year. That was number two in the NFL. First down, Jets at the 29-yard line. Ticking down to five minutes left in the fourth. To Martin. Gain of about four to the 26-yard line. You got to like the indomitable feeling that uh, Herman Edwards has instilled in these Jets, too. I mean, they really are resilient. Yeah, there's no problem with the offense tonight, but the defense, they look tired on that last drive. No pressure on Gannon in the secondary. Just looked a little leg heavy. Second and six now at the 25-yard line. Four and a half to play. Raiders come on the blitz. Then he's stepping up. Ooh. But down he goes anyway at the 28-yard line. It will, will be recorded as a blitz, as a sack. Roderick Coleman and Grady Jackson were both there. Greg Beekert had three sacks during the season. Looks like Vinny might be hurt, dragging his right arm. Beekert gets picked up there by Richie Anderson, but doesn't stop. Keeps after Vinny. Now we got to check him out as he goes down right here. 
He is shaking because the Jets have taken a timeout. Big Grady Jackson will shake you. He will. If you don't take a timeout, he's got to come out of the game. And they don't want to do that right now because they have a third down and long coming up. The critical play of the game for the Jets right here. Chad Pennington is the backup and I guess the would-be successor at some point. Second-year quarterback out of Marshall, but you don't want to put him in in this situation. And, and if you put him in McEnroe's chair right now, he'd be off the charts. <laughs> Heart rate. So they have to use a timeout to buy time for Vinny to regroup. And here he comes now on third down and eight from the 28-yard line. Raider blitz. He gets it away. It's caught. Taken to the 20. It's Richie Anderson. He drops the ball, but recovers it himself. However, he is shy of the first down, and clearly you're going for it on fourth and one here. And that was the key on that play. Vinny knew he didn't have to get the all the yardage for the first down, that Herman Edwards would go for it on fourth down because you have to. Watch for the cluster route now where the Jets will bunch their receivers and try to get a pick against man-to-man -man coverage by the Raiders. Fourth and one. It's a little toss back to Lamont Jordan. And Jordan puts his shoulder down and gets the first down and takes it to the 11-yard line. Jordan's got real strong legs. He's got real power. And when you lower your shoulders like that, you drive through tacklers. Brilliant play selection by Paul Hackett, faking the dive up in the middle, and then the flip to the outside. It's a big man coming at you. Not only does he have strong leg drive, he has the belief of his coach, a rookie, getting the call on a fourth down call late in the fourth quarter. Very impressive. 5'10", 130. First and 10, the ball is at the 11-yard line. Three minutes to play. Testaverde slings it to the outside. That's caught. Anderson tries to get out of bounds, but can't tackle there by Johnny Harris. They can't afford to throw passes like that that don't stop the clock hit now. They've had to use it one timeout just a couple of moments ago. In a position now where they're clearly forced, if they can score, to onside kick with two and a half to go, second down and five. They can't get a first down without a touchdown. Got to throw this ball into the end zone or out of the back of the end zone. Then he throws it over the middle and is caught, and they do anything but. It's Richie Anderson to the four-yard line, doing the Raiders a favor. It's like an odd syndrome we've seen sometimes this year where they're almost too relaxed about the constraints of time. We've seen it with other teams. And not only that, they're going to take it right down to the two-minute warning. So there goes a free timeout. Two-minute warning, still trying to get into the end zone, down by 14 in Oakland. John Gruden pacing, talking to Bob Casulo, the special teams coach, but right now it's the Jets trying to get into the end zone, then an onside kick recovery, and they'd have two timeouts. But first things first, it's third down and three from the four at the two-minute warning. Anderson is set in motion. Testaverde throwing, and that's incomplete. And they still haven't tried to throw the ball into the end zone intended for Corbett. And they're going after the best defensive back of the Raiders and Charles Woodson. I don't get the last two play calls. I certainly don't like the clock management. You've got to throw the ball in the end zone here. You can't expect your receiver to catch the ball, break a tackle, and score. They can get a first down without a touchdown, but he's got to throw it into the end zone here. It's fourth down and three. This is the same formation that Anderson scored on earlier. The cluster. Testaverde into the end zone for a touchdown to Krebet. Over the middle, just about the same spot where he had Anderson earlier for the touchdown. This time it's 80 instead of 20. Yeah, brilliant play call. You got it. <laughs> 
Hall for the extra point. So there is Hackett making the play call there. Jets get in. Now they need an onside kick recovery. They have two timeouts. Oakland up by seven. Hoping to get into the game and Vinny hoping to get right back into the game. And I say that because you have an anticipated onside kick situation coming up right now. When onside kicks are anticipated, as will be the case here, you recover if you're the kicking team only a fourth of the time. If you try to surprise your opponent, as you see, you recover two out of every three. So the Jets with two timeouts, and no matter what happens, they'll take their timeouts, even if they don't, as you look at Mike Westhoff, they'll take their timeouts defensively. But if the Raiders recovered, clearly it's a situation where the field position is going to make it very different very difficult for the Jets and it is Hall who lofts one all the way down to the 11-yard line shockingly and Tim Brown is out of bounds at the 22 with a minute 49 so now the Jets have chosen to take their timeouts field position is what Herman Edwards is thinking about yep so they're gonna take that obviously the first thing they have to do is stop Oakland from getting a first down. They give it to Wheatley. Now the Jets will take a timeout. Okay, that's a buck 45. Then they can take a timeout after the next play. But then the Jets are forced in a position where the Raiders will take all of the time off the clock that they can before they punt and leave the Jets with no timeouts and a lot of the field to traverse. And you also got to think about the Raiders punter, Shane Leckler, who led the NFL in punting this year. 46 yards per kick but that might give an opportunity for Santana Moss to get a big return was exactly what the Jets will need so second down the final timeout now coming up after this play then he's just waiting in the wings From the 21. And the Jets do their job, the defense does, so that stops it with a buck 40. You know, Al, some would say maybe Herman Edwards is being a little overly patient here, but if there's anybody who knows about cutting it close, it's Herman, who's in one of the most famous cutting it close plays of all time. Pasarczyk fumbles, bounces right up to Herman. He was leading the good life there, couldn't have got a nicer hop. Turned it at the very end of the game of play that still haunts New York sports fans. I don't believe what I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Jets right now cannot stop the clock after the next Raider play. So let's say the play takes about five seconds. Then the 40-second clock starts to tick down. And it will be with under a minute that the Jets will get the ball back. When your quarterbacks only miss six throws out of 29, Gruden's got to be tempted to throw this ball. But... I think he's going to have to run it, take time off that clock. I agree. It, it must be so tempting, but he knows if if he fails, the Jets could capitalize. Garner. Oh, well, this is going to make everything move. Everything. They're on to Foxborough. Touchdown. Breaker against the blitz. Herman Edwards decided to blitz the Raiders right up the middle, try to cause some type of turnover. The perfect call by John Gruden. The pitch to the outside. Garner goes 80. Untouched. Janikowski for the point after. 80 on third and 11. I got it, I got it. And now down by two touchdowns and out of timeouts. In this game tonight, the two teams have combined 
to possess the ball 18 times, and on each instance, the offense has gotten across the 50-yard line. Watch the pressure up inside. The toss to the outside. See you later. Roland Williams out in front. Key block and hold by Tim Brown on Victor Green. Gets away with it. And Charlie Garner, bad foot and all. Got the longest run of the season for him. Getting across the 50 in dramatic fashion that time, Al. That equals the second longest run in postseason history. And also, it's, it's it, an historic run in our mind's eye because when you think back to the longest run in Raider postseason history, prior to this, it was Marcus Allen in that memorable run in the Super Bowl in Tampa against Washington. Tim Brown on the outside with the key block right there. And when you add this 80 to what the Raiders have done tonight, they go over 500 yards in offense. Zooming you in. don't think that traveling across the country three times in seven or eight days affects the defense. 500 yards worth. Uh, Brown perspective on the long touchdown. It's Raider lore. It's all over the place, Al. Tim Brown, Jerry Rice, Rich Gannon. Well, the last thing they wanted to do was have to play a game this week when they had the bye week secure, but at least right now their season will go on. And the Raiders will go to New England next week to take on the Patriots on Saturday night as Moss drops the ball at the seven-yard line. And then works his way out of bounds up at the 26. So barring the wackiest miracle imaginable, here's the way it will look. Oakland against New England. And then tomorrow, Miami meets Baltimore. And the winner of that game goes to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh next week. You think Bob AFC. Kraft thought he'd have a night game in the playoffs now early in the season? I'm not sure Bob Kraft thought he'd have a game in the playoffs this season. <laughs> Yeah, the Raiders have got a taste of that jet lag having to go back to Boston. But they're rolling now, aren't they? From the 26-yard line, first down for the Jets. Testaverde dumps it off to Curtis Martin over the middle, and Curtis up to the 48-yard line. Well, whatever Herman's selling, though, the Jets have definitely bought because they're, they're taking it down to the final tick. 859 yards of offense in this game. 502 for Oakland, 357 for the Jets. On first and 10, that pass is caught by Coles, and he steps out of bounds just at about the first down marker. Well, obviously the ship has sailed, but it's nice to see uh, Herman put his stamp on this squad. I mean, you have Gro to Beck back to the college ranks. You wonder what you're going to do, and they've picked the right guy, hey, Al? I would say, and it was a, a surprising choice. Terry Bradway came in as the general manager. Bro shocking everybody. And Herman had not been a head coach. He was Tony Dungy's defensive backfield coach and assistant head coach at Tampa. Second down and one. And Vinny stepping up. Throws to Coles and makes the catch at the 32. And he takes it to the 16-yard line. So the Jets just refused to die. Vinny now will come up and spike the ball. And that stops the clock with 33 seconds. Yeah, you look at the uh, Jets in their future with, with Lavernius Coles coming on as he did this year. They get Santana Moss to get healthy next year with Wayne Corbett operating over the middle. If Vin Vinny comes back and gets more and more comfortable with Paul Hackett's offense, don't forget Curtis Martin. The Jets will be in the playoffs again next year. Second down and six throws to the end zone as the clock ticks down, and that's incomplete. They want a flag. Don't get it. Clock ticks down to three zeros, and the Oakland Raiders, the number three seed in the EFC, advance in the playoffs. Nice game. Nice game. Fun game. The magnificent Jerry Rice. John Gruden, still the youngest coach in the league at the age of 38, taking his team 
one more step. And it ends with the Oakland Raiders beating the New York Jets 38-24.